How's it going guys? It's Cole from See Through Panel talking about Step by Bloody Step by Simon Spurrier and Mateus Bergara. Uh, colors by Mateus Lopez, graphic design by Emma Price, and Glyphology by Jim Campbell. I believe that's the um, made up languages in the book. Uh, there we go. Published by Image, retailing for $18 US collecting four issues of Step by Bloody Step, but they are a bit oversized, I believe. This is only a four issue trade, but it looks to be about six issue size, at least. Uh, it is, as the cover says, a wordless fantasy, and it is something I was really looking forward to earlier in the year when it was coming out. Uh, Matthias Bergara is just fantastic. I know him from Coda, which is also with Simon Spurrier. Um, as always, real quick, I'm not gonna spoil the plot with my words, but I am going to be flipping through the book, and especially the book like this where the story is the, the art, um, you might get spoiled just from seeing some of that. So if you're worried about that, read it first, come back, and then we can talk about it. So opening page here, setting the tone. This story is really about a girl who is on a very long adventure with no one but her giant um, guardian, which looks like this. Blade covered in snow there. It's used frequently. A lot of beautiful action scenes in this book. A lot of fantasy landscapes. And it is this little girl and her guardian going across a huge fantasy world, going from one end to the other, it seems, um, for what we don't actually know. Um, there are some things about this that can be confusing at first. It is a wordless book, so that's bound to happen, but I think you will find that all of it is completely comprehensible if you just continue with the story. There were some questions I had, and while I would love to answer them here, I think it's better for you to just experience the book and come to your own conclusions about these things, because there can't really be any one true answer that we know because there's no words to actually explain things like that so it's kind of just open to interpretation which I'm a huge fan of. Some people might be a little frustrated in that regard and I don't think this book is for people that want a very detailed story and to know uh, cold hard facts about the plot and the world. You're not going to know much. The only words spoken here are in a fictional language that is created specifically for this book. There's the guardian killing some sort of wolves while the girl plays up here with a flower. A lot of awesome spreads like this in the book that just show off landscapes that Matthias Bergara is doing. And I think while Bergara is of course very impressive in this, it's impressive that Simon Spurrier had such a tight script that he was willing to do a wordless story and still orchestrate everything that's going on inside the story. And Mateus Lopez is doing awesome, awesome work on colors here. Just really, really beautiful stuff. You almost would think it's uh, just uh, the artist coloring himself. I think it's so consistent, it works so well, that I assume Bergara had some sort of color guides or notes. But if not, I mean Lopez is just knocking it out of the park here. There's really not much to talk about in terms of story. Um, it's just a simple adventure book. It turns into something a little different towards the end. I won't talk about that. Um, our main character grows and changes throughout the book here. She's a bit older. Kind of confused me originally that her hair is um, a lot more kind of light in the beginning, but it's black at this point and continues to be black throughout the rest. It's just the character growing and aging. and um, I think it's a really nice touch that that happens because that's a very realistic thing to happen. Another awesome landscape. You're going to get a lot of those. And you're going to get a lot of cool creature designs. Very impressionistic here. Very few lines on the page. Almost all just color, as you can see. Just either side of these tree-like spore things. Only just a little line. All color other than that. But then, the, you know, the Guardian is ridiculously well rendered in detail, even at that small of a scale. Which is really cool. This one is, God, it's pretty much just landscapes, me showing off landscapes, but I love this one and kind of what it 
what it says. It looks like almost like radar tower-like things with some signal coming off of them. I'm not sure. Almost a maze in terms of the land and the water running through it. Our main character down there with the guardian fighting some plant-based monster in the very corner. Something you wouldn't even notice until you get to that little ribbon panel at the bottom. Really, really cool stuff. Really awesome creature designs here. This one just explodes. Really awesome action. Um, very emotionally driven story. I think the ending, without getting into spoilers, will be a bit divisive for some people. It may leave you feeling cold, but if you're like me, um, it's, a, it's quite a satisfying ending and has a really good emotional impact. Can't say much more without spoiling it, but I personally thought it was really, really nice. Um, cherry on top of the book and actually benefits from a, this book benefits from a reread I think just to understand all the things that Spurrier and Brigara are trying to say both thematically and literally in the story because you can miss things in a wordless uh, story like this I love when he throws down just really thick lines of ink when something's really close in the foreground it happens quite a few times he goes from very very thin lines very detailed to just very thick ink lines like I'll show soon but this is just distracting me won't say what it is but it's just very very awesome to look at and this is actually still a, an interior page it looks like almost a cover to me and I thought this was really nice because I think it's a mixture of Bergara and Lopez um, with the like wash effect here on the ink coming down and then the color it looks like a painting. I'm sure it's just a little bit of ink wash and on pencils and stuff, but it's really, really nice looking. As a almost like a break page. More landscapes. I'll probably be done showing it off here soon. There's just so much, so so much cool designs. Like there's a good example of the design and the thick line. So feathers coming really close to the front of the page, very in the foreground, ridiculously thick lines. You get to the background here. Richly detailed design of this bird that comes up once or twice, but is really just minor to the story. It does not at all matter. If it was just like them flying a plane or a giant bird that looked normal, it wouldn't change anything, but Brigara goes out of his way to make it just so detailed. Background looks amazing too. But then pulling back up to these lines, it's just so different. I really like that. There's a bit of a almost a, a poem type intro to each issue, and those are technically um, words about the story, but it's really just vague and not directly tied to the contents of the issue, so I wouldn't count that as anything breaking the rules or anything like that. Very painterly again, kind of shadowy, rain-filled sky. I think you guys have seen about enough. I really recommend this book. It gets in it's very emotionally driven. It's action packed at the same time. It has very, very interesting characters. Even though they don't talk, you kind of understand each character. Um, there aren't a ton of them, but the ones that are shown are very, very consistently consistently represented. I really, really love this book. I'm so glad to have it on my shelf now after waiting the better part of a year for it. Uh, I will always check out what Matthias Bergara makes. Uh, Cy Spurrier, I am a fan of. Um, I can't say I love everything he's ever done, but I've really enjoyed his more recent work, especially with Bergara here. And uh, I think the whole thing comes together with Mateus Lopez to just be absolutely wonderful as a book. I would really, really recommend it. It's less than 20 bucks, especially on Amazon or like in stock trades or wherever you get your stuff. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, it's even maybe not kid friendly, but young adult friendly as well. So. Really recommend it guys if you've read this let me know what you think because i'd be curious i haven't seen a lot of talk since these single issues come out usually most talk about graphic novels happens when they're being serialized and not when the trade or the whatever it may be the collection comes out so let me know what you guys think thanks for watching guys peace